Welcome to Civilspedia, the current affairs digital, digital library powered by Shankar IAS Academy. As part of today's discussion, we will discuss Indra Dhanush, Indian Science Congress versus India History Congress and Tribes India by Tribal Trifid and Opentification Free versus ODF Plus and also ODF Plus Plus. And finally, in relation to India-Afghanistan relation, we will also discuss an article from The Hindu wherein the author talked about inevitable exit. First, let us discuss this Indra Dhanush topic was taken from the Press Information Bureau of Government of India, wherein the mission Indra Dhanush has been selected as one of the 12 best practices globally in terms of health, which was published in British Medical Journal. And entering into it, the process, the program of immunization was actually uh, started in the year 1978 as uh, in the name of expanded program of immunization. Immunization is a process wherein a person, a human being, was made immune to an infectious disease, typically by the administration of a vaccine. We look into vaccine preventable diseases, some of the vaccine preventable diseases. In the year 1985, this program of uh, immunization was remodified into Universal Immunization Program in the year 1985. This program targeted absolute or immunization coverage to all districts in India by the end of by 1989-90. However, uh, this UIP or universal immunization program could not, uh, you know, cover immunization to around 35 percent of children during their first years of age. And therefore, in the year, in the year 2014, in December, the government of India has launched Mission Indra Dhanush with the purpose of uh, providing full immunization to children up to two years and also to pregnant women. This we have to keep in mind. And, uh, and this program actually had an objective of providing 90% immunization coverage by the end of 2020 or earlier. However, in in the month of October 2017, the government of India has actually pushed for intensified mission Indra Dhanush, wherein the target of achieving this 90%, at least 90% immunization coverage by December 2018. This we have to keep in mind. And coming to some of the vaccine preventable diseases, we could see diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles and severe form of childhood tuberculosis, hepatitis B, meningitis and pneumonia caused by streptococcus pneumoniae and Japanese encephalitis are few some of the diseases or infectious diseases that could be prevented by vaccine. And some of the vaccines are rotavirus vaccine. It, it prevents infection from the virus rotavirus which causes diarrhea in babies and also in young children. And inactivated polio vaccine deals with uh, polio and adult Japanese encephalitis vaccine deals with uh, Japanese encephalitis and pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is uh, to prevent uh, the disease such as meningitis and pneumonia and measles rubella vaccine to prevent measles and rubella in children, among children. And next we will discuss this Indra Dhanush. In terms of banking sector, in banking sector in August 2015, the Ministry of Finance and Government of India has announced this plan wherein one of the primary objective is to infuse capital in public sector banks. It does not include private sector banks. You have to keep in mind public sector banks to the tune of around 70,000 crore over a period of four financial years, 2015-16. 16, 17, 17, 18, and 18, 19. All right. And it also, it actually had uh, uh, recommendations or suggestions or plan or scheme to involve in appointments in banking sector, particularly aimed to separate the, the, the post or designation of uh, chairman and managing director and it also proposed to create this bank board bureau and also capitalization 
and so and also to de-stress the banks from how it suffered from this non-performing asset problem and also to empower banks by providing the uh, an acknowledgement or an assurance that no interference will be there on the part of government and also delineating intervention from interference and also providing a framework of accountability wherein the banks were requir required to provide their performance through performance indicators and also to show their accountable accountability particularly in terms of financial inclusion and in allocation of resources and governance reforms included a typical meeting of uh, various banking institutions and also government agencies which are involved in banking and other provisions as well including uh, creation of this bank board bureau these are some of the provisions which are also called as a b c d e f g plan this intradhanush of banking sector one has to keep in mind whenever the term intradhanush it has two connotations particularly in terms of health and also in terms of banking next we will look into indian science congress and indian history congress this indian science congress was is a professional body created by j l simonson and p s mcmohan it met for the first time in the year 1914 and it presently comes under the control administrative control of department of science and technology which comes under ministry of science and technology coming to some of the objectives of indian science congress one of the most important objective is to promote and advance the cause of science in india and also to conduct this annual sessions every year and to provide publications of various research papers etc and also to tag take various matters of interest in in the in the field of science and it consists of around 14 sections one should keep a note that even anthropological and behavioral sciences are involved in this uh, in this jurisdiction or this working area of this indian science congress including archaeology and psychology and educational sciences and it also includes information technology and computer sciences as well and very recently or at present it is going on that uh, 106th indian science congress is being held in jalandhar punjab and the theme for this 106th indian science congress is future india science and technology and now let us discuss this indian history congress unlike indian science congress which is a professional body coming under ministry of science and technology indian history congress is not coming under the government arm and it was established in the year 1935 and some of the objectives of this uh, indian history congress include to provide to promote and to encourage scientific study of history and also to uh, to take necessary steps related to protection of monuments of historical importance and also to defend the secular approach to indian history and also to take various matters of interest of historians who could be teachers and researchers and these are some of the objectives and it consists of six sections and which are ancient india medieval india modern india and contemporary india countries other than india and also archaeology you have to keep in mind archaeology comes in indian science congress and also indian history congress and one very rare there is a rare chance of asking question in indian history congress one of the section is countries other than india but in the year 2014 in one of the congress of indian one of the annual session of indian history congress the then vice president of india has actually requested indian history congress to alter the name countries other than india to countries and regions other than india which could be you know a, a chance of uh, question at present it is only countries other than india and uh, very recent in the month of december 2018 the 79th session of indian history congress was about to be held however the program got cancelled or postponed which is not clear as of now and with this we come to the end of this topic next we'll discuss the topic tribes india by tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india limited this uh, trifed comes under ministry of tribal affairs tribes india is nothing but a brand name under which trifed is doing retail marketing of tribal products 
and one of the most object most important objective of this tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india limited is to promote the social and economic uh, and to, to is to make better the social and economic life of its members and particularly the tribal population by engaging in professional democratic and uh, autonomous manner particularly through undertaking marketing development of the tribal products that is the main role of this trifid trifid and earlier it was involved in procurement and sale of ms mfp or minor forest produce and surplus agricultural produce however now its role has been expanded or broadened it becomes it it is now serving as service provider facilitator and coordinator and also market developer for tribal products all right with this uh, we come to the end of this topic one important thing is that this trifid comes under ministry of tribal affairs next we will discuss this open defecation free and odf plus and also odf double plus or odf plus plus this info, this news was taken from the hindu newspaper and before entering into our topic let us uh, know this uh, swachh bharat mission gramin and swachh bharat mission urban swachh bharat mission gramin is under the aegis of ministry of drinking water and sanitation whereas Swachh Bharat Mission Urban is under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Housing and Urban Affairs. Primarily, this one has to keep in mind. And coming to the definition of open defecation free, according to Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, is at any point of day not a single person is found defecating in the open. However, the definition also includes ODF is termination of fecal oral transmission, particularly. there should not be any visible feces found in environment or village this is the definition given by swachh bharat mission gramin and every household as well as public or community institutions should use safe technology option for disposal thereby there is no contamination of surface soil ground water or surface water and uh, the excreta or the feces should be inaccessible to flies and animals and also there should be freedom from odor and unsightly conditions this these are the basically the definition of odf and uh, very recently we hear this odf plus and odf plus plus certification particularly in terms of both this odf plus or odf plus plus seek to achieve sanitation sustainability once a, a town is declared as odf odf open defecation free status then they have to maintain the sustainability in sanitation so that the village or the town will always be odf open defecation free therefore necessary steps has to be taken and according to ministry of housing and urban affairs odf plus shall include and there is a clear demarcation between odf plus and odf plus plus as of now there is there is no clear announcement of odf double plus or plus plus scheme under ministry of drinking water and sanitation let us now discuss this ODF plus includes to ensure proper maintenance of toilet facilities it does not uh, after achieving ODF status in order to provide ODF plus certification a region has to ensure proper maintenance of toilet facilities that is all community and public toilets are functional or and well maintained however when we come to ODF plus after getting ODF plus status when we got to to get a certification under odf plus plus there should be safe collection conveyance treatment and disposal of all fecal sludge and sewage and uh, and only if there is fecal sludge septage and sewage is sewage is safely managed and disposed or treated with no discharging or dumping of untreated fecal sludge uh, uh, and sewage in drains will a town be given odf plus plus status odf plus plus status is obtained after getting odf plus status or whenever all these three conditions odf and odf plus conditions and these conditions are fulfilled will a town or a ward or a urban area will obtain this status and according to ministry of drinking water and sanitation the odf plus activities include water cleanliness of water sources and public water bodies 
and it also includes the odf plus activity of also includes awareness and training on pit emptying and fecal sludge management etc and these are uh, slight variations between the two ministries however uh, aiming to achieve open defecation free status in all over india in whether in village or in town by the end of uh, by october 2 2019 with this we come to the end of this discussion on odf and odf plus and odf plus plus next we'll discuss the article in the hindu which talks about this uh, exit that which that is very certain or unavoidable for the american forces from afghanistan earlier in one of our civil speedia classes published on november 18 2018 we have discussed this india afghanistan relations in particular connotation to the afghanistan and the author under hindu has stated that afghanistan is a graveyard of empires particularly great empires in the year 1930 in the years 1839 to 42 during the first anglo afghan war the british forces were made to retreat and in the year 1979 the Af afghanistan was invaded by then soviet union which again was made to retreat and soviet union disintegrated and balkanization happened and economic power might went down by the end of uh, 1980s that is the fall of uh, soviet union pertaining to the invasion of afghanistan and the author states after 9-11 attacks now united states is also a drawdown uh, carries out drawdown of security forces or in other way is retreat is retreating from afghanistan therefore the author calls this afghanistan as graveyard of empires and the author has state author is stating that india shall not say that there will not be an exit or uh, exit of u.s troops from afghanistan the exit of u.s troops from afghanistan is inevitable or unavoidable or is absolutely certain therefore india shall prepare to manage the drawdown or this exit of u.s troops from afghanistan India shall be prepared because of the security reasons because as of now India, Pakistan is uh, operating and in, India has to keep, India is wary of concerns about Pakistan and Pakistan's closeness with China and if Afghanistan is also getting added to the loop of pa Pakistan and China then the security infrastructure in the north would be already will be challenging because already certain a significant amount of indian territory in the hands of pakistan as pakistan occupied kashmir and also akshay chin which is a, which a significant amount of territory was under the influence of china illegal occupation of china and if afghanistan goes in that that fold it will be a severe difficulty for india in terms of it any nation in india's neighborhood if instable if unstable in terms of uh, non-democratic practices or establishment of military government is not good for a nearby democratic countries particularly here and we talk about india because it has serious implications to the relations that we have to the neighboring countries and also in, the, in terms of trade and investment and all other people to people contact and balance of power earlier I, we talked about if afghanistan is goes out of this democratic control it could be it is suspicious susceptible to become a part of this china and pakistan and therefore there could there, shall, there might be a, a instability in the balance of power and in october 2018 india iran and afghanistan has carried out first tripartite meeting on charbahar port project this is one significant development related to the balance of power however what happens in future after the withdrawal of with us troops and particularly after this uh, since 2000 in the year 2018 has seen as a major blow to the afghan security forces and also to the civilians of afghanistan and serious amount of land has been under occupation of talibans and this we have to keep in mind and also presently we are having significant investment in afghanistan and also if uh, in future if india is not prepared to, to meet this challenge there could be a blow to the bilateral trade and investments that india has planned to carry in afghanistan and it is currently carrying this and the author is also highlighting with india giving more importance not to sark but to bimstec bbin and indian ocean rim associations india has actually isolated pakistan 
and also it has isolated Afghanistan. Because if you look into the member states of BIMSTEC, BBIN, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Nepal and Indian Ocean Rim Association, wherein in the month of November, Maldives also has become a member. If you see all these institutions, if you see the member countries, it will not have Pakistan and Afghanistan in the grouping. So it, it could be a foreign policy of other countries, you know, whenever you, you, you make India to isolate Pakistan, we are also succeed, they are also successful because in a way it has led to isolating Afghanistan as well. Therefore, the author is asking India to keep Afghan, to take necessary steps to involve particularly with Afghanistan as well because India has, has recently given importance to BIMSTEC, BBA and IO, Indian Ocean Rim Association. And there, therefore, India has to be pragmatic, practical and also to understand the security consequences it has to face once there is an inevitable exit by US troops from Afghanistan. With this, we come to the end of today's discussion and, uh, and we request you to like our video, comment our video and also to subscribe to our Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates and content on civil services preparation.